Sports. It's in the game. Monaco. Formula 2 has been welcomed back to this most famous of race locations and the excitement in the air is building as we count down to the start of today's race. So the circuit of Monaco, 19 corners making up this famous two-mile racetrack. It's already one of the slowest tracks in the calendar and in these difficult conditions, we can expect the average speeds to be even lower still. Even with that, it's fair to assume we may well see the safety car out at some point during the race. I'm joined by a man who's had many a wet race, Davide Valsecchi. Just how challenging will these conditions be out there on track? Delighted to be here, Alex. Even in this weather, nothing will be easy for them. We may have standing water, which means visibility will be a worry. They just need to stay clear of the white lines and curbs. That can cause you a real problem when it's so slippery. OK, now that we've got some good points on the board, let's continue this form and aim for another top 10 finish. Mark having very high hopes for us for this race. I can't promise anything because it's wet, it's rainy, and, well, it's Monaco. Welcome everyone back to F122, the driver career mode round two here at Monaco. And it's going to be utterly terrifying here running in the wet. My first time running this track okay. in the wet conditions, especially in Formula 2. I'm about two seconds away from my first wet laps here at Monaco. Qualifying was in the dry, and I just want to at least survive this race at the very minimum. So... Uh, already backing off on the entry to turn number one. Everyone side by side ahead of us. I look to the outside and I immediately regret my decision, but decide, you know what, we'll stick with it. So we get by Zendeli, who got forced out, actually. So in a way, we gained at least one position. Two positions, technically, since we did start last. So it's not even behind us. And we're trying to find our way around and tiptoeing around the corners as well. Nearly running into the barriers. I run to that barrier way too many times I can count. Uh, a lot more than I can count in F1 2020, so I uh, wouldn't recommend. Damages the car, apparently, for some odd reason. But down to the uh, the very famous hairpin here at Monaco, which for some reason the name eludes me. He says famous, forgets the name. Sounds about right. I'm tired, so <laughs> it's very early morning uh, when I'm recording this. Regardless, though, uh, we managed to get by quite a few drivers while Shong and Deletta, and we're sitting right behind for the poly, so... It's wet conditions, but at least on the bright side, you know, we're 15th, well, 16th already, looking at the back of 15th. And it's not the first time that we're sitting behind for the Paldi here on the track, so not our first time, well, proverbially, theoretically, hypothetically, some kind of word that means that we're not literally running into the back of the Paldi as we try and get teammate position. So we're not too far behind our teammate. Okay, no issues with tire wear for now. Keep taking care of that. And so I make sure that we don't have any wing damage after that, because if you notice, I bonked to the wing just a little bit there through its back. But luckily, we managed to survive going on to lap number two. So again, just tiptoeing, trying to make sure that the car actually, well, doesn't spin and that we don't hit the wall. Uh, theoretically, we could probably go to sixth gear, but... I'm taking it very easy throughout turn number one here because I hit that wall a few times in dry conditions in qualifying. It didn't help out too well. The AI is a bit better than me here in sector one, but I bring it right back as we go up the hill through Beau Rivage. Taking it very easily here as we listen to the throttle application or lack thereof. Because I don't want to wreck. It's wet. It's beautiful. It's awesome. This game looks fantastic in the wet conditions. I mean, just look at the reflections off at the pole here. Look at how shiny that is. I love it. Yes, I'm stalling for time. There's not much to do because we're just sitting behind for the poly here. We're trying to figure out where to go to get by for the poly and get up to a uh, Zhou Guan Yu and maybe even our teammate potentially. But again, it's just no dice. The AI is a lot better on the, uh, the corner exits than I am. They're a lot more sure of this track in the wet than I am. And, well, that's fair play to them, considering they've technically run in the wet before. They know how to run in the wet. I don't. 
Well, I do, just not at Monaco. Actually, no, I believe this might actually be my first wet race uh, in the entirety of the F1 game. Correction, second race. The first one was at Miami, but that was Grand Prix mode, so... Doesn't technically count. Wasn't in Formula 2 anyway. I'm just sitting directly behind for the poly, just trying to figure out, okay, where can I go? Can I even go anywhere? Can I not spin out, please? As we have closed the gap significantly compared to the last lap, compared to the closing of lap number one, the end of lap number one. Trying to figure out where to go again, just sitting behind. We can't do anything. All we're forced to do here, that's that's the one downside of these conditions, is that we're technically forced to, uh, well, just sit behind here and really just wait for something to happen. Or in my case, try and see if I can find a place to go. Looking to the right-hand side, I think about it, I decide against it. I know a lot better than to send it up the right-hand side due to so many, uh, different decisions. You may see the purple there on the mini-map. That is my, uh, that's the entire session fastest, uh, Sector 1. We go around the outside of Fittipaldi through the hairpin. And right up on the gearbox of Zhou Guan Yu, I thought about for a split second, do we go to the right-hand side, but we really don't have enough, uh, we don't really have enough overlap to make that move stick. So we're gonna stick behind Zhou Guan Yu. Through the Mirabeau chicane, locking up actually just quite a bit. Luckily, we managed to hang on to it, so we got relatively lucky that time. And even then, if we did go wide, well, it would have been fine. We don't currently have the data for that request. And some reason, Mark has forgotten how to check the weather, so let's skip ahead to the hairpin on the next lap, lap number 415. Again, the sprint race, the feature race, I believe is 21 laps. Uh, here at Monaco, trying to see if I can get past Shogun Yu, hesitating a little bit. Then we have a bit of the overlap, and we squeeze them out, technically, but we also do have the uh, the space to get by. So up to P14, behind our teammate as well, and uh, I have a few flashbacks, actually, to the previous race that we did just earlier today, in, term in the terms of YouTube sense. Uh, yesterday, well, correction, last week, in terms of in-game sense. So, we're doing really well, actually, and I'm glad I gave myself the nickname the that... Oh. Uh oh. Oh, 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 no, no, don't tell me it's gonna be ending like this again. Oh my goodness, we really cannot catch a break, can we? We actually have pace here, and just like that, it is absolutely ruined. And we have to go in to pit for front wing damage, and somehow that's early turn in. And I'm quite frustrated. 14 second pit stop. Luckily though, in these conditions, we do have at least a one stop strategy. Or you can go a stupidly aggressive two stop, but... You know, the, the AI is going to pit anyway. We are going to pit anyway, so... What's one lap earlier compared to the AI, especially in wet conditions? So we move on to lap number five. Coming to lap number six uh, for us. And while we see everyone in front of us, most drivers are actually in pit road. Can we even get by at least Nasani going into turn one? No, he's got the exit before us. And if we didn't have that front wing damage, we might have been able to just get out in front of him. But the key thing is here, cold tires are a thing. It is wet conditions. I think the cold tires in, uh, in wet conditions are at 50 degrees Celsius, where 60 is optimal temperature. So we caught right up to Roy Nasani. I thought about diving up the right-hand side. Again, we set the fastest uh, Sector 1 time, which for some reason doesn't show up on Delta, which is really weird, so why have it there in the first place, but regardless, a slow 24 kilometers an hour, and Sunny has... I've heard of parking it on the Apex, but that's a bit too literal there. That is a staggering 15 miles per hour. That's the equivalent of going through a school zone. So we probably get by Nasani, although a lot later than I would have liked, but... And we we'll get by him regardless, luckily. Taking it very easily through the Nouvelle Chicane, through the braking zone especially, as Piastri is in the pits. So I think, right. Now, now that we're past Nasani, we're technically almost, almost in the wall again there, actually. I have flashbacks from literally two laps ago, just like, please don't hit the wall. Uh, we're technically in line to gain a few more positions. I'm taking it so carefully, but still just trying to send it in some portions of the track because I want to get positions. We were sitting 14th before I bonked to the wall and broke the bit of the front wing, so... Trying to get a weather report again. 
and some reason Mark still doesn't know how to just look outside or look at a radar of anything really. I'll take even AccuWeather. Not sponsored. Uh, <laughs> we at least get by Zendeli on pit exit, so that's something, but... Again, Cole Tires with AI, so we're catching right up to Samina. We're, we're becoming very familiar with some of these guys here in the back. I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing. It's not a bad thing, but it's also not exactly the best thing, considering, well, we're sitting P20 right now. And it's not exactly the, the best of situations right here, so... Knowing what happened with our experience with Nasani, we go up the right-hand side, left-hand side. Nasani, or Samina on the right-hand side, and the literal definition of scraping the wall. Somehow, we managed to get away with that. Mark is happy with that, and I want to make sure we don't have any damage. I, I guess we don't, considering he said nothing about that. That's not exactly the vehicle condition, technically speaking. Yes, it's the whole vehicle, but... If I want to know about tires, tell me about the tires. You know, when I, when I ask about the tires, tell me about the tires. When I ask about the vehicle, don't tell me about the tires. Anyway, uh, Ben Vascal with the fastest lap, a 136. Staggering lap time. Uh, we got the f fastest second sector. I'm tripping over my words because, well, I'm trying to trip over the AI, essentially, as well. I'm trying to get by everybody here, but... We managed to survive. We're doing great. We're actually closing in on Beckman just a little bit. 1.8 seconds at the line here. The AI again with the better corner exit, but we're better in essentially other parts of the track. Actually a fantastic turn one entry and exit. Surprisingly speaking, we're actually doing pretty well. We bumped the front wing, sure, but we're still in the run. Oh. 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 Well, okay. Well, up through Beauvage. Oh my gosh, and we set the fastest sector one time at least, but we bonked the wall again. On the bright Check side, it's... For a new strategy option. Oh, I was going to say at least it's not bad enough for us to have a different strategy. We're going to keep the current strategy, and I'm going to stay out, because I don't feel any severe damage. It's wet conditions. What's the worst that could happen? You know, maybe a bit of understeer, but let's be honest. It's not as hard as I hit the wall into back, so it could be so much worse. We've caught up to Beckman as well. Nearly, okay, okay. Listen, when I said caught up to Beckman, I know we caught up to Beckman, but I didn't think we would catch up to Beckman there. So, tiptoeing very carefully, especially here through, <laughs> through to back, because I don't want to wreck the car. Fastest sector two time. We could be in line for a fast lap here, actually. Unsurprisingly, though, I don't think we did, considering, well, Beckman happened, so we have to wait quite a bit. The next lap, lap number nine, trying to sneak up the left-hand side. Beckman knows on top of the gearbox again, go to the right-hand side, and just like that, up to P18. So I'm going to be skipping ahead now to lap number 10. As we're just trying to catch up to Deletta now, there's a caution up ahead. Could this actually give us a chance to... Who is it, though, actually? Who's having a problem? I think it's Fittipaldi. It's Fittipaldi. He's got a problem. He's terminal. Is this going to give us a safety car... Uh, oh, 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 wait. Oh, he's he's on the runoff. So, oh. Well. So much for that chance. I mean, I mean, our front wing isn't really tampering us too much, but it would have been nice to have a good front wing. But, you know, so much for the safety car. Not even a virtual safety car at that. Just a sector caution since the track isn't being blocked. So, and it's not really the most ideal thing to look forward to. But, you know, at least we survived. We caught to Deletta. We're still making gains. And I'm still not confident in breaking here as we catch right up to Deletta. Oh my gosh. Bump him, I think, just a little bit, actually. Nearly take off our front wing on the exit of the chicane. Then we back off. Very carefully as well, especially through here. Fastest sector two time again. Sitting on the gearbox of Deletta. He just won't move out of the way. He goes wide. We try and make a switch back, and it actually works out because we poked our nose in. Then we're up to P16. Granted, it's not points, but it's P16. So you know what? I'll run with it. I'll take it. I'll literally run away with it, considering Deletta's quite slow through the corner, apparently. Swimming pool chicane there. So cut ahead towards lap 11, lap number 12 now. In fact, throughout lap 11, I set the fastest time, a 135.287. I don't know how I got the fastest lap time, but this gives me confidence. Paul Shong here at this point, 
is 3.2 seconds ahead of us. So this gives me confidence. This actually gives me a lot of confidence. End of lap 13, coming lap 14 now. We set the fastest job, lap again. By almost a whole second, and throughout that time, we've caught up to Ralph Boshong. And again, much like the first race, literally the first race that we did, I'll take P15 over P17. And this time, we might actually be able to get P15 if we can get by Boshong here in front of us. Nearly hit the wall on corner exit, but you know what? It's fine. It's fastest sector one time again. We are just lighting up the timing boards. So I guess now is a good time to say it's a good time. Wait a sec. Oh, no. Boshong, why? He did the same thing that Sonny did to us. Park it on the apex of the corner. Ah, oh, man. Every time, dude. Every time I was about to say it, it's, it's just bad luck, isn't it? I was going to say, maybe it's a good thing that we call ourselves the Rainmaster because while we're setting fastest sector times, granted we're not leading, but that's beside the point here, as we catch right up to the gearbox of Boshong, parks it again. So now I'm trying to figure out where exactly I can make the pass here because we're going to be stuck behind Boshong until the final lap here, at the very least. Going through the swimming pool chicane, almost lock up, I think. The tire was still spinning, but we do go a bit wide, and that gives me a bit of a reality check for the for the most part. Just be careful. Get by Boshong if you can. It's possible. We just have to string together a very perfect lap. So here we go to the final lap of the race. Okay, this is your final lap. Final lap of the race. And right now, we're just trying to at least focus on getting P15. Redemption, I would call it. I'd say it's redemption for the very first race of the season that we did because we only got P17 in Bahrain in our sprint race. See, so if we can get P15 in this sprint race, fastest sector one time again, then I'll be happy with that. So we're going to catch up to Boshong here in the hairpin. I know what happened last time, so we'll go around the right-hand side. He goes, of course, he goes a bit faster this time now that he knows he's under pressure, but it's too late. We go up to P15. There's Zhou Guan Yu once again. Could we get P14? Just possibly, maybe. If he messes up the corner, we'll see. Through the tunnel we go. Nearly running into the left-hand side of the wall. We're going to take it very easy. Ba Shang sends it up the inside. The first time an AI has sent it up there for us the entire race. My goodness. Well, he couldn't get the move done because he didn't have the preferred line. And just like that, he's immediately a second off. We tiptoe very, very carefully, especially in this final lap here. Through the swimming pool chicane. The final two section, mount the curb, somehow didn't get at least a warning for the penalty there, or what well, should have been the penalty, but we don't have strict corner cutting on for obvious reasons. So if they don't want to penalize us, then, well, that's not my choice. So we come across the start-finish line, and we're going to finish P15, Redemption for Bahrain. as we're now moments away from the off. Let's take a look at the grid order in which they'll start today's race. A fantastic effort from Felipe Dragovic yesterday puts him on pole position, and it's Daniel Tictum in P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Porcher, for sure, Jack Aitken and Lungard, Phipps, Lawson, Viscal, Marino Sato, Daruvala, Armstrong, Oscar Piastri, and Boshong, Fittipaldi, Joe, Beckman and Alessio Deleda, Zendeli, Samaya, Nisani and the Rainmaster. Now it's almost time to lights out, so let's get down to the track. I'm Alex Jakes and I'm joined once again by the GP2 champion Davide Velsecchi. Davide, today's race takes place on one of the most infamous street circuits in motorsport. What is it about this track that makes it stand out? Alex, I'm very happy to be here. Monaco is a short track, but the wall is just after the white line. The drivers need to stay aware from the line and from the wall. And it's so important to start in the first two row if you want to compete for the victory. So we're coming to the grid now for the uh, second race, the feature race 
21 laps on hand for us. We're on the alternate semi more aggressive strategy of softs uh, to super softs as the AI will be doing super soft to soft for some reason. We have fantastic parking here as we wait for the five red lights to go out. And it's green flag racing. It's actually a fantastic start by us. We get the jump on Nasani for the second time this week. This race, technically this round, whatever you want to call it. We go up the right hand side of Samina. And now we're going to be essentially deadlocked here side by side. Up through a Beau Rivage. Nearly making contact, I think. But we managed to hang on to it. I decided to peek out the road to the outside of Deleda. It's not going to work. And we get turned actually by Samina. A bit of contact almost. I don't know what Samina was thinking. He covers us off. I almost fake out to the left. I don't know where to go. I decided to just hold station on the right hand side. I don't know what Samina is thinking. And I aggressively sent it up the right hand side of everybody just because I want to get away from Samina because I, I don't want to stick with him if he's going to be doing that all of a sudden. So up to P15, shockingly, just like that as we uh, sneakily make our way around the right hand side. And Mark is, I'd say he's relatively happy with that. I mean, he didn't really say anything, but, well, you know, dead last 22nd to 15th in, app, in one lap. It's just an absolutely fantastic running so far. And it's the first race that I've done in Monaco. The first laps I've done in Monaco in Formula 2 specifically, especially dry conditions. The first serious laps I've done, anything else I've done was a uh, essentially a time trial lap, maybe like one or two laps in the Formula 1 cards. But that was just for fun. That was Grand Prix mode, so it didn't really mean much. I think that was on equal performance anyway, so... Regardless, we're doing pretty good. We're doing great. We're P15. We have Fittipaldi ahead of us. We're actually closing the gap a little bit. Fastest third sector of this race so far. Nearly running into the wall. I actually had to downshift a second there, just so I know. It's like, hey, uh, you know, let's make sure the car is actually stable for once under braking. Being very careful with the throttle application and brake application throughout here. Under the bridge, back into the hairpin once again. Which again, the name still eludes me. Could I have Googled it throughout this time? Yes, I could, but I'm not going to because, well... I love the ambiguity. It's nice. <laughs> it's a hairpin anyway, it's not too special. Uh, game pass, Fittipaldi there. Mark is very happy with that, at least. So we're up to P14 already. The last time we were in P14, though, uh, was the sprint race. So I'm focused on at least getting by Armstrong here. Because, uh, well, we had a little bit of a run-in, almost quite literally. I think, actually, quite literally with Armstrong um, and Bahrain. So through to back, we hit the... No! No, oh, not the... Oh. And for the second time this race week... Confirmed. We have to go into pit road, we get shoved onto the super soft tires, and we have to fix the front wing once again. Literally cannot catch a break through that corner. That time I turned in too early. Somehow I hit the button late even though I was still on time, but we're going to cut ahead now towards lap 4. Once again through to back, taking it very easily, although cutting it stupidly close throughout that corner. Fastest sector 2. We're actually on the flyer here. We hit the wall. Wait. Well, that's not exactly the best thing, but we're fine, so we're going to get... Go... Wait. No. No. Oh, no. Not like this. We're beached. We're beached on the curb. We got stuck on the curb here. We can't go anywhere. And I have to make the awful decision to retire. Or else I'd be given the penalty, disqualified, whatever. And that's it. That's our race weekend. We couldn't do anything. Even the AI can't do anything. It's a bit stuck right there, so... I was, I was entirely beached. I would have gotten an external shot, but unfortunately the game crashes every single time I try to get a replay of that, so... I can't really show anything. Uh, I can't show an external shot, but... Yeah, you can get beached on the curbs here in F122 now, but that was not the best way for us to have a... That's that, that's awful. That's an awful way to end the race here. I survived the wet race, but I crashed in the dry race, which is a bit weird. Pulling a bit of a Daniel Ricardo, but that that's genuinely awful, unfortunately, so... We're going to have to look ahead towards the next race, and next race is going to be Azerbaijan in Baku.